I would like to request all the participants to please uh, turn your cameras and microphones off when you're not talking. And we may take a few more minutes as more people are joining the call. So maybe a few more minutes. All right. Okay. So once again, uh, I would like to request all the participants to kindly uh, turn your cameras and microphones off while you're not speaking. Um, and if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat box below. And I will direct them to our presenter at the end of the session. Or uh, at the end of the session, you can raise your hands and you can directly ask your question to the presenter. Okay, so we would like to start. Um, uh, I would like to welcome you all to another session of Rewild Presentation Series. And in this, uh, we would like to thank European Wilderness Society for the wonderful collaboration uh, and for providing platform for the web webinar. And big thank you to Max who are just here talking to us and also to uh, Jonas and everyone else. Um, this presentation series has been going on for some uh, some time now, and it will continue for some more time. And if you uh, want to know about the topics and dates of the uh, of the presentations, you can uh, find there. You can find the dates and topics um, in rewild.institute and on wilderness.academy. So I'll also leave these links in the chat box later, so you can copy from there. Um, all right, okay. We would also like to uh, inform you and also welcome you to the first International Wilderness Week in mid-October. Uh, it's a worldwide five days uh, long conference on wilderness, on wildlife, biodiversity, and climate change, and other things. So it's, it's gonna be a really um, interesting um, program that Max and the Wilderness Society plans. So uh, if you want to submit the, uh, your abstracts of online presentation for the program, um, I'll also leave the link in the chat box below. You can copy from there again. Uh, today's presentation um, is a really special one and we are very thankful to Friends of, ne uh, Friends of Nepal Nature. Friends of Nature Nepal, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I, um, if I'm a bit intermittent because I'm also admitting people. All right. So for today's presentation, a big, big thank you to Friends of Nature, Nepal. Uh, it, it is also a close partner of the Rewild Institute and a very big thank you to our presenter for today, Mr. Yadav Kimiri. So, mm -hmm. Uh, a brief um... all right okay uh, a brief um, introduction of our presenter so Mr. Yadav Kinure has carried out a great extent of research in some of the most remote districts uh, and areas in the Himalayan region. Uh, he has special interest in wildcats and his major focus is uh, on cloudy leopards, of course. And um, he has come up with several substantial findings from his researches uh, in terms of distribution and altitude records. 
uh, he is also a very inspirational figure for the younger generation of researchers. Uh, for the emerging people, he is someone that everyone looks up to. So uh, now, once again, I would like to request everyone to turn their cameras and microphones off. And I, want, I would like to uh, hand over the platform to our presenter. So if you're ready for the presentation. Thank you, Bina, very much uh, for a very, very nice in introduction. Uh, thank you to European Wildness Society uh, and uh, Revival Institute uh, for this platform. Uh, is everybody hearing me? Yes, yes. Hello? Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, let's move to the presentation. Sharing my screen. So is it visible? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so it's it's already a little late. So let's uh, start. Uh, so the topic of my uh, uh, presentation today is uh, research and conservation of clouded leopard in Nepal. Uh, I'll move forward. So many of uh, us here might uh, not know clouded leopard well. So first, uh, I'd like to introduce clouded leopard uh, to all. Uh, clouded leopard is a felid species, a cat species which is close to tiger, leopard, uh, and uh, it was described uh, uh, for science for the first time in 1821 uh, by a scientist called Griffith. And from Nepal, it was described in 1840 uh, by Brian Hodgson. Uh, it's a medium-sized cat species uh, having unique adaptations. So it's mostly arboreal, so it lives in trees, so for that, it has special adaptations in its body. Like uh, it has a rotating ankle in its back uh, hind legs so that it can climb down uh, head first in a tree trunk. So that's one, one of the uh, uh, unique adaptations. Uh, and it has a super long tail, which uh, acts as uh, helps in uh, balancing while it works uh, in trees. And it has a very long canine. It has a two inch long canine, uh, which is amazing for a, for a cat of its size. Like the size of uh, clouded leopard canine and tiger canine is almost the same. And consider that tiger is almost 10 times uh, bigger than clouded leopard. So proportionately, uh, body wise, uh, it has the longest canine of any carnivores in the world. So these are some of its unique adaptations. And uh, because it is very arboreal, it's, it can uh, climb and it can uh, move around in trees like uh, monkeys. Uh, so it is also known as tree tiger uh, because of its arboreal uh, qualities. So uh, this is the distribution map of clouded leopard. Uh, so clouded leopard is found from central Nepal eastwards. So every country which uh, lies in the uh, east from uh, Nepal in South and Southeast Asia, clouded leopard is found in those countries like Nepal, Bhutan, and uh, Northeast India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, uh, Laos, Cambodia, Malaysia, and Bangkok, uh, sorry, uh, Vietnam, and China. Uh, Clouded leopard was also found in Taiwan, but uh, it has gone extinct uh, for quite some time now, around uh, 70 years, I guess. So they are planning to reintroduce uh, the species, uh, but haven't done yet. <clears throat> and uh, I'll also quickly uh, uh, talk about uh, the threats that uh, uh, makes this uh, amazing species threatened. Uh, in this part of the world, uh, like people are mostly over-dependent on forest for their daily life. 
they need firewood for the uh, and uh, so so these one stack of uh, firewood is uh, for one family so you can imagine if there are like 200 to 300 uh, family uh, families in a village so there's a huge pressure in the forest of firewood order and all those uh, things so it's one of the threats it's uh, because cloudy leopard lives in big forest and it needs trees a lot so this is one of the threats and uh, then the this threat uh, the construction of roads and other infrastructures like hydropowers in cloudy leopard habitat it is quite recent uh, the road construction has it started uh, quite uh, rampantly in the last 10 years uh, in nepal uh, because of the decentralization uh, currently like local government has more budget and more power so they uh, they are making roads everywhere and the problem is uh, making roads is fine but there's no environmental impact assessment no proper monitoring so uh, the clouded leopard habitat it's heavily fragmented uh, these days uh, in in the in the lower part of annapurna's conservation area where we work uh, there are around 50 more than 50 hydropowers uh, some are already constructed some are uh, construction is going on for some uh, and there are other studies are also going on and then there's illegal wildlife trade. Previously, this, this threat was not known uh, much, uh, but when we look at the records, uh, we can see that uh, illegal wildlife trade is also uh, one of the factors which threatens uh, the existence of uh, cloudy leopard. So I'll move to uh, cloudy leopard research in Nepal. So I'll not talk about the work which we just uh, we are doing I, I i'm talking about wool and then uh, come back to our work so the first radio coloring of cloudy leopard uh, in uh, in the world rather uh, was done in 1988 in chitunasa park south of Kathmandu. Uh, it was accidentally uh, caught and uh, the researchers in Chitunasa Park, they radio colored the species and left it uh, in the forest. They monitored it for nearly 10 days, uh, but then it went out of the range and uh, there was no, uh, the researchers couldn't track. That was the first instance of uh, uh, a cloudy leopard being researched, but not much uh, data came out, out of that research. Then we started, then, then there was a big gap. Uh, from 89 uh, to uh, 20 years, nearly 20 years, there was a gap. And then we uh, started our research in Makalu National Park. You can see Makalu National Park in, is in eastern Nepal. This is Kathmandu. This is the international boundary of Nepal. In the north, there is China. The south, it's India. So Makalu National Park, it's in the eastern Nepal, uh, not uh, widely visited. National Park, very remote. So we uh, started uh, a research there with using camera traps. Uh, so in total, our survey effort uh, was 1184 trap nights. So I'd like to talk a little about trap nights here because some, this is a technical term and you, uh, some of you might not uh, understand. Trap night is uh, something which uh, the sampling effort or uh, our effort is we can uh, put it in numbers. Like if I have one camera trap and I put it outside the tree uh, for one night, then that is it uh, calculates to one trap night. If I have two camera traps and I put it outside for one night, then it's two trap nights two cameras into one night, two into one, two trap nights. And if I have two camera traps and I put it outside for five nights, then two camera traps into 
five nights, two into five, ten trap nights. So this this uh, this figure illustrates how uh, what was our uh, sampling effort or how uh, much uh, work did we do. So it was 1184 trap nights, uh, and we recorded a total of 25 species, uh, but we didn't record any clouded leopards uh, in our camera traps. So that was a low point for us, but there was some other indications of uh, clouded leopard presence in that uh, particular uh, Nestle Park. We came across two pairs. Uh, it was heartbreaking to see, uh, but we at least we had an indication of uh, the species presence in that area. So uh, let's move that. That was done. And then there was another short study of presence absence uh, of clouded leopard in Langtang National Park, which lies just north of Kathmandu National Park. Uh, but the survey team, they were unsuccessful in recording the species with camera traps. So it's a highly elusive species, clouded leopard. So the chances of getting it uh, captured in camera traps, it's very low. So if you have very few number of cameras and you put it outside for like uh, two, three days or 10 days, 15 days, it's really difficult to get uh, them in uh, camera traps unless you are very, very lucky. Then there was another uh, study uh, in Sibapuri Nagarjun National Park. This is just in the outskirts of uh, Kathmandu, this national park. Uh, so there was a camera trapping study in 2010 uh, where the National Park Office itself uh, started uh, this work, uh, and they were successful in getting uh, cloudy leopard pictures. So this was the first camera trap picture uh, of cloudy leopard in uh, Nepal. Then <clears throat> you can see the Nepal map here. The, this yellow lines, it's the international boundary. You can see the capital city Kathmandu here. And this is Annapurna Conservation Area. It's west of uh, Kathmandu. And uh, we started uh, a survey in Annapurna Conservation Area in 2011 and 2012. Uh, I'll talk about the results. We did the camera trapping. We uh, did indirect sign surveys also, but uh, camera trapping was the primary uh, method. In, the trap nights were less than that in Makalu world. So we only had 740 trap nights uh, in that uh, survey. In, uh, and we recorded 16 species and we got uh, clouded leopard also in our camera traps. But, and that was the first record of clouded leopard for us. Uh, the photo is very interesting, the photo we got. Uh, you can see uh, it's a very dark photo and our camera traps, they had like in camera, there was a very small 1.3 inch screen. Um, and when we checked, we didn't find anything because this was very dark and uh, in the middle of the photo here, it was uh, because of the flash, there was light, but we didn't see uh, cloudy leopard. And after the survey ended, we were like hanging our heads down. We were very, uh, uh, very disappointed. Uh, I was thinking this should there should be cloudy leopard. The habitat everything matches. So, uh, but there was no cloudy leopard when we checked the photo. When we we came uh, to Kathmandu and then we downloaded it in our laptop and then we had again we went thorough with all the pictures. And this picture we got cloudy leopard. I can I'll crop you. And so this is the cloudy leopard. So this was the first uh, record of cloudy leopard. Uh, from our study. Then, then we started working uh, on uh, getting cloud leopard records, uh, almost all records, uh, even trade related, and uh, doing presence absence survey. Uh, then we published a paper on uh, in Oryx, an international journal, where we presented cloud leopard uh, record in Nepal updated record. Uh, if any of you uh, are interested to go through this uh, 
paper. Uh, I'll share the link uh, here later, uh, or I can provide it to Ingrid and you can contact. Uh, then in 2016 and 17, we, we, we had a, a confirmed presence record of cloudy leopard from Annapurna conservation area. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to uh, increase our survey effort. We, we wanted to uh, estimate uh, the occupancy uh, and density of cloudy leopard in that area. So this time we were very systematic. The, the area in green, these are, the, this is our, the, our intensive study area. These points, these are random regular points. And out of these uh, pink points, all of these pink points, we selected uh, 53 random uh, points where we went to uh, in the field uh, to put uh, the camera traps there. So, but uh, our survey effort was very high actually uh, compared to previous efforts. We had 4,345 trap nights. Some of some of our camera traps they ran for like 104 days continuous. So that, this was quite a bit of effort. We recorded 23 species of mammals, uh, and out of which one species was new for uh, Annapurna conservation area. And we uh, recorded clouded leopard also. Uh, but the problem was we recorded four individuals of clouded leopard based on their uh, these uh, body patterns you can check this or oh, sorry this is a different cloudy leopard than this we can compare the markings this is also different and this was because it's in a different flank these are right flank pattern this is a left flank but the area where this cloudy leopard found was found was very far away and in between there was a river and a hydropower uh, project going on so potentially this is a fourth uh, individual uh, clouded leopard there but the problem was we got very few uh, recaptures or one camera trap didn't only one camera trap captured clouded leopard for more than one uh, interval so that because of that statistically we could not uh, estimate density or occupancy or any other uh, such uh, numbers. So we were uh, still not very happy, but at least we got something, a baseline uh, of how many cloudy leopards, at least how many cloudy leopards were there in our study area. There were another, uh, a very important record, Asiatic wild dog or dhole, which is a canid species, uh, which lives in packs like wolves do. Uh, this was never recorded in Annapurna conservation area before. So this was a new species for that protected area. And uh, we have uh, started a conservation program for this also. And then there's common leopard, which is the apex predator of uh, these uh, hill ecosystems in Nepal, uh, where the tiger is not present. Uh, common leopard acts as the apex predator, uh, which regulates the prey base and maintains the ecosystem. And then Asiatic black bear, uh, yeah. a very small, nice creature called spotted linsang, uh, which is, this is the first photograph mm -hmm. of spotted linsang from Nepal. So you can believe it. It was uh, described for science in uh, 1820s, 30s. And since then, this is the first photograph of this species in Nepal. So very important uh, record. So when we started collecting clouded leopard occurrence points, uh, we came across many, uh, but still not uh, large enough data to uh, do anything with that. We can just plot it. I have plotted uh, this data uh, here in this Nepal map. The point, this point, it's the westernmost hill now. So further west, we do not have any authentic record of clouded leopard. So from, from this point, eastward, 
still but there are still like big holes in this area hole in this area we have no information about cloudy leopard from this hole here here hole so a lot of effort uh, needs to be put into uh, to get a proper status of uh, cloudy leopard um, even the presence absence from which uh, part of nepal do cloudy leopards occur where they don't even for that we have to put a lot of uh, effort we also started uh, collecting uh, trade record um, we uh, reviewed literatures uh, we looked at newspaper articles uh, we looked at uh, other reports and published papers uh, to look at cloudy leopard uh, records involved in trade cloudy leopard we didn't know that uh, there are a lot of cloudy leopard uh, involvement in the trade but when we started digging into it uh, we came across uh, many records so the y axis here it's uh, it it is the number of pelts seized and in the x axis we have years. The first one is 1988-89. Uh, this was a record uh, of four cloudy leopard pelts in one of the markets in Kathmandu. At that time, it was quite long way back. So uh, illegal wildlife trade was quite open at that time. So uh, the authors they encountered uh, in Kathmandu, proper Kathmandu. In 92, all, it was also uh, in, in, the, in the open market two pills so that was uh, we can't imagine how uh, it is uh, how things were back then but then then we started looking at others since 2009 10 there have been regular uh, seizure incident of a cloudy leopard and the highest was in 2017 18 five cloudy leopard pills were seized that means like five individuals at least five individuals were uh, killed for the pellets. This is quite a high number. Uh, and the problem with this trade data is, uh, it is very difficult to say uh, this is it. Because uh, when we look at the newspaper uh, reports, uh, most of the journalists, what they do is they, they can't differentiate cloudy leopard and uh, common leopard, cloudy leopard and leopard cat. So there's a lot of misunderstanding. Many reporters, they uh, even if they come across cloudy leopard uh, trade-related incident, they, in the newspaper they write leopard or common leopard or leopard cat or tiger. So that's a big problem. So uh, the number shown here, this might be uh, much bigger than this uh, for sure. then we started um, uh, we at least we had some data some information uh, so we started uh, conservation uh, camps uh, that targeted sensitization of the stakeholders and uh, one of our primary stakeholders were students and general people so we uh, visited schools uh, interacted with students uh, we had a powerpoint we collected documentaries, uh, which shows cloudy leopard climbing trees uh, and preying on uh, monkeys and squirrels and deers. And all those fascinate, uh, children were fascinated by all those uh, information and they were really interested. We also uh, started doing similar uh, sensitization, uh, sensitization workshops with uh, general people also so this is one of the uh, presentations in uh, one of the schools so sensitization is also fine but we also wanted to uh, orient student on how research is also done how well research is done so we would uh, make the students uh, hike up to the forest, uh, uh, carry binoculars, uh, camera traps, 
um, and uh, tell them, uh, teach them how to bird watch, bird, and how to set camera traps, and what kind of uh, places, uh, trails do cloudy leopard walk, and uh, make them identify tracks of cloudy leopard and other species, and scats, play with scat, uh, try to identify what's in the scat, what could uh, uh, that cloudy leopard or any other species have eaten. So all these uh, also uh, made the students very much interested. They were getting involved. And then, like those were targeted uh, uh, to uh, a particular audience. But when we have to go to the masses, uh, then media is one of the important uh, uh, media is one of the important thing uh, to take into account. So we also started uh, preparing uh, radio programs uh, for sensitizing general people in large numbers. Uh, like this is uh, one of uh, uh, the program where uh, we uh, aired the program to uh, to two districts. So it's it's news. Like many uh, people might have listened to uh, this program, and uh, some some people might have been influenced uh, by uh, these kind of programs. So. Another important thing that we uh, thought uh, was orienta orientation to uh, politicians. Uh, one of the pioneer conservationists in Nepal, Dr. Hemant Raj Mishra, what he told once was uh, political will is, will is paramount uh, for conservation. So we thought, why not uh, we also uh, orient the local politicians on cloudy leopard uh, conservation issues. So we conducted a program. Uh, we presented on cloudy leopard, uh, talked about them, the threats to the species, and how the uh, how conservation of cloudy leopard would benefit the local people and uh, local economy even. So that was one thing we did, and it was really nice. Uh, the uh, Chairman of that uh, particular municipality, um, the, he committed uh, financial support uh, for cloudy leopard conservation uh, from next year, so uh, 2021. So uh, Nepali fiscal year is coming, new. So new fiscal year is coming uh, within this month. So it will start. So let's see how uh, the promise is kept. But they have committed, and we are very hope hopeful. This will be very important for cloud leopard conservation in this area. And uh, we have herders who share uh, the habitat with cloud leopards. Uh, they have the livestock. Uh, and for these livestock, they depend on uh, the forest where cloud leopard also live. So interacting with them, uh, the problems uh, and how those, uh, those problems can be solved. Uh, that is also an important uh, aspect of clouded leopard or any other carnivore conservation. Uh, so this is one of the glimpses of uh, one of the herders interaction program. Then we also started clouded leopard day celebration uh, since 2019. Uh, we did this in March 2019. We went to a village. Uh, and contacted with the school. Uh, we handed over conservation materials uh, to uh, uh, school uh, administration. And then we organized a workshop for uh, students. We organized a painting competition, a cloudy leopard painting competition for the students. Then we did a cloudy leopard eco trip uh, for the students. They were taken to the nearby forest and they were made to use camera traps, uh, look at the sign and all those stuff. So when we look at our conservation activities at a glance, uh, till now we have uh, conducted over 30 conservation camps, reaching out uh, to more than 1,000 students. Uh, 
and we have also conducted uh, around 10 uh, public conservation camps where uh, people from uh, villages, local people from villages, they are uh, talk, uh, they are oriented about, sensitized about uh, the cloud leopard conservation. We have produced two radio programs. Uh, based on this, we have reached over uh, 20,000 people, over 20,000 people. Uh, and we also produced 1,000 posters, uh, out of which 500 have been distributed. Uh, we did cloud leopard day celebration. You, uh, I talked, it, talked about it uh, a little while ago. And we have conducted three hiking uh, events for students uh, to the cloud leopard habitat. So, and now, uh, since 2018 and 19, we have, uh, since we started the cloud leopard conservation uh, activities, uh, we have been trying to make it regular, a uh, regular feature of our um, activities. So we have been searching for uh, funding uh, for continuing this. So uh, in 2019, we secured a funding from European Outdoor Conservation Association for two years uh, for cloud leopard conservation. So till now we were doing uh, sensitization, interaction with people, trying to convince them, but we realize that that is just just uh, one of the aspects of conservation. Uh, more things should follow, like uh, capacity building of uh, local people, and, uh, and maybe alternate uh, income source, uh, and then the ways to reduce uh, livestock depredation, retaliatory killing. So we realized that, and so uh, the funding we secured uh, from that funding, we are going to organize nature guide trainings uh, to the youth uh, in the villages of our study area. Uh, the, the area where we are working is, uh, it's visited by a lot of people, a lot of foreign tourists also, and a lot of uh, internal uh, tourism. Domestic tourism is booming in, in that place. So uh, people go there for trekking, for birding, uh, and for research also, wildlife research. So, uh, if we uh, provide this kind of trainings, nature guide trainings, this will help uh, the local youth uh, to uh, add up to their uh, income. Uh, they can, uh, they will be hired by researching groups or trekking groups uh, and, and, and can earn uh, alternatively. And we have homestay management training. The, all the villages uh, in that study area uh, have homestays. Uh, some, some of them still are at the very basic uh, stage. So we want to do a homestay management training, including the homestay um, entrepreneurs uh, in the training, how to uh, make a proper homestay, good homestay, how to manage a good, good homestay, which will, of course, uh, uh, make uh, which will make uh, the visiting tourists feel uh, good uh, for staying in a good place. Then forest fire is one of the uh, reasons for habitat loss of clouded leopard. So we also want to provide forest fighting training along with the equipment to the local people. So we conduct forest fighting training, provide uh, equipment to them so that they can handle the small level forest fire, uh, uh, forest, uh, forest fighting training, and so they can fight the uh, forest fire. And, uh, and the habitat loss can be uh, reduced. And then we will also uh, assign cloudy leopard ambassadors uh, Leopard ambassadors, like people who are local level, either local level politicians who have a good respect, or local leaders who have good respect, uh, and who have also done uh, conservation work in the local area. We can assign them as uh, Cloudy Leopard ambassadors 
so that people who listen to them uh, they will follow uh, what the ambassadors say so they uh, th this is one of the uh, activities and then we have predator deterrent uh, fox lights installation so we have a lot many corals uh, in the villages where the livestock are kept uh, and since uh, a lot of uh, herders they retaliate uh, by killing the carnivores when when some carnivores uh, depredate on their livestock they retaliate by killing them so what we want to do is try to uh, uh, try uh, to reduce that retaliatory killing by installing fox sites uh, in their corals, uh, which will like blink. Uh, it has a different pattern. So uh, carnivores, uh, which which come to the corals, they will not enter. So this has been successfully uh, trialed in uh, Annapurna Conservation Area, only in, in the northern part of Annapurna Conservation Area. So we'd like to install these two and uh, to reduce livestock degradation, which will in turn uh, reduce the uh, retaliatory killing. And then of course, uh, sensitization uh, camps, uh, we, which we have been doing, uh, we'll do this also. Uh, other than these, there are other activities also like trekking trail improvement uh, and uh, uh, producing conservation materials, producing booklets, uh story booklets on cloudy leopards which we are working on and uh and we are working on securing more funds uh and develop more uh innovative uh activities cloudy leopard uh, conservation in nepal we have uh these are what we are doing and now we have some future plans uh, I have kept some of them uh, here. So we want to conduct a presence absence survey of the species in at least three new sites. Uh, the sites which have not been visited yet or looking at presence absence of cloudy leopard. So we'd like to visit three new sites and conduct presence absence survey of cloudy leopard to uh, ascertain whether uh, cloudy leopards are there or not. Uh, then we'd like to perform species distribution modeling uh, for identifying important areas for this species. Uh, right now, we have very few data. We have around uh, 20, 20, 22 uh, cloudy leopard occurrence point, confirmed occurrence point, which is too little for a reliable estimation of uh, uh, reliable distribution modeling of this species. If, if we uh, collect at least uh, 10 to 15 more uh, points, uh, distributed points, then we can uh, come up with a map where we can uh, pinpoint the areas where cloudy leopards might uh, occur. And so that we can uh, uh, direct our effort there. So that is what we want to do. And then immediate plans uh, is also on SCAT based studies uh, since cloudy leopard is very elusive they don't uh, usually come in camera traps uh, which has been uh, experienced we have experienced that uh, so we want to do a scat based surveys so we'd like to collect the scat of cloudy leopard uh, we'd look at the dna uh, of the scat and try to find uh, try to estimate their population based uh, on those cats uh, and uh, also occupancy the in our study area which part of our study areas are occupied by cloudy leopard and which are not and then of course diet diet is uh, very important uh, till now we are not sure if livestock uh, cloudy leopard really preys on livestock or not uh, so to to make uh, sure, we can conduct a diet uh, analysis of cloudy leopard scat. We are uh, developing uh, these uh, proposals and we are looking for uh, funds to carry out this survey. So this this will be uh, a groundbreaking uh, study for this species if we can do this. So uh, 
we'd also like to start long-term ecological study on cloudy leopard and its prey species also. Like maybe if if we are able, it's really difficult to trap a cloudy leopard, but if we can, we'd like to put photos and look at how far they go uh, and other ecological uh, parameters of this uh, species. And maybe if we get more data, we'll perform population habitat uh, viability analysis, PSV of the species. Uh, we need to have a lot of information for this, but uh, we are uh, very hopeful that we can uh, do this. Uh, we'd like to initiate clouded leopard research grants for university students. Um, funding is always a problem, but we have uh, been successful in uh, starting cloud, uh, research grants for students in OWLs. So we are hopeful that we will also be able to start uh, research grants for cloudy leopard uh, for students in near future. Uh, for cloudy leopard, uh, there are two species of cloudy leopards. Uh, I had to tell this earlier, sorry. Uh, there are two species of cloudy leopards, one which is found in mainland Asia and another called Sunda clouded leopard, which is found in the island of Borneo and Sumatra in Malaysia and Indonesia. So previously they were uh, assigned a single species, but now they are different uh, species, totally different species. So a lot of funding goes to the Bornean and the Sunda clouded leopard, so very little in the mainland clouded leopard, but we, we are trying our best. Then if everything goes well, we like to have an action plan for cloudy leopard conservation, which can lay out uh, the, the uh, actions, activities, uh, which are important for cloudy leopard uh, conservation in Nepal. We'd like to uh, complete that by 2025 latest, but let's see how it goes. But we are very hopeful that uh, we can collect more information and make a basis, uh, strong base for uh, cloudy leopard conservation action plan uh, in Nepal. And next thing we'd like to do is expand a cloudy leopard conservation program to at least three different sites. Currently we have a cloudy leopard focused conservation program running in Annapurna conservation area, in one municipality of Annapurna conservation area. We'd like to expand these to two other sites, regular. So that's what uh, we plan to do. Um, and this is repeated, sorry, uh, research grants for university students. And uh, as we know, we would like to work closely with local government agencies and local people for cloudy leopard conservation. One thing I uh, forgot to mention you uh, when I was talking about local politicians, when we convince them, they, the Madi rural municipality, uh, they have assigned a special status to cloudy leopard. Uh, it's like uh, like official mammal of uh, Madi rural municipality. So cloudy leopard has given has been given a special place in Madi rural municipality because of uh, our effort. So it was very nice. So uh, political will is paramount, as I said earlier. So these are uh, our future plans. Uh, and this is uh, uh, it. Uh, so anybody who uh, wants to, uh, who have queries, they can 